Okay, welcome, welcome, yogis. Uh, one more practice. Uh, today I said I'm going to cover the elements. So just settle down on your mats. You're fine, Ranjini, don't worry. If the camera gets whatever is essential. It's okay if the palms don't show right at the top. Okay, so settle down on your mats. Um, get in touch with your physical being. Get in touch with your breath. If possible, sit cross-legged for today. If that's difficult or uncomfortable, uh, go ahead and sit in Vajrasa. So whatever works for you, preferably cross-legged today. Uh, today I'm starting a series with the help of Ranjini and thank you Ranjini for playing along. Uh, this is a series that is a favorite of mine. I call it the elements and I'm going to be covering the five elements of nature. That's earth, water, air, fire, and ether. So we're moving from something that's solid to something that you just have to imagine and that's ether. So you've got the earth, which is solid, firm, grounded. You've got water, which is fluid. You've got a mind of its own. You've got air, which you can't see, but you can certainly feel. You've got fire, which is pure energy. And then you've got ether, which actually contains that energy, which is nothing but the thing that fills up space in the universe. And it's just something that you imagine. So we're starting with the earth. And that is why I'm requesting you to sit in cross-legged so that you have a lot more area of your body in touch with the earth. So you feel grounded. And as you pull your thoughts away from the rest of the day, try and bring to mind what is it of the earth that gives you a sense of belonging? Because everything is on the earth. You belong to the earth. And if it weren't for the earth, you would probably not know any of the other elements. You would not know your own mind. You would not exist. Probably. So the earth is where you belong. And strangely, some of us end up losing the sense of belongingness. We lose the sense of community. We feel we are distant, we are divorced from what's going on. We, we somehow feel disconnected. And that's why a practice that hurts you, that grounds you is so much more, is so important. And that's why root down into your sit bones. Your sit bones are those two pointy things at the back of your hips. So root down. And as you root those down, increase the length of your spine. And you'll find that you can only increase the length of your spine. You can only grow if you're grounded. If you're not, you won't be able to grow your spine at all. And then try and remove the tension of growth by relaxing your shoulders away from your ears. And then move into your breath, which is the air element. We'll come to that later. And actually just in sitting here, you are combining all the elements together. So you're grounding yourself on the earth. Your digestive juices, together with the air that you breathe, are creating the fire in your stomach, creating the energy to go through your yoga practice, which hopefully calms down and energizes your mind 
which can be mapped to the ether because ether is literally vacuum of space. And so is your mind. You can't see your thoughts. You can just imagine them. When you're ready, blink your eyes open. Inhale, circle your arms all the way to the top. Interlace your fingers, push the soft of your palms up towards the ceiling. Pull your elbows in and once again, remain earthed. Push your sit bones into your mat. Exhale, release your palms all the way down and interlace them behind you. Squeeze your shoulder blades in towards each other. Take your heart up, take your chin up into a nice soft little back bend. Go as deep as your body will allow you right now. Keep your shoulders moving away from your ears. And as you exhale, release, get your palms in front of you, interlace your fingers in front of you, round your back, stick your chin in towards your chest, keep pulling your elbows in towards each other, keep rounding that back. And as you slowly exhale, feel that stretch on your upper back, maybe your middle back, maybe your lower back. Slowly, slowly, slowly release. Come up to a tall spine, right palm outside, left knee, left palm behind you. Inhale, spine tall, exhale, twist. This is where you're getting into your digestive juices. Slowly, slowly, slowly release. Left palm outside, right knee, right palm behind you. Inhale, spine tall, exhale, twist. Only to the extent of your flexibility. Slowly release. Right palm beside you, inhale, left palm up and across. Keep pushing your left hip deeper into the mat as you reach your left fingertips across and then maybe a little down. But the more you push your fingertips down, the less you want to bend your elbow, the more you want to push your hip into the mat. So you get into a nice lateral stretch. Slowly release your left palm all the way down to the mat. Inhale, take your right arm up and exhale over to the other side. Keep pushing your right hip into the mat. Reach through your right fingertips. Slowly release. And then whatever works for you, rise up. So either you can take support or not take support. Cross your ankles in front of you, rise up and come to the top of your mat. Keep your feet about hip distance apart, your heels behind your second and third toes, pull up your kneecaps, point your tailbone down, take your spine tall, relax your shoulders, push down equally into all four corners of your feet, bring your palms in front of your heart, set your intention for your practice today, which is for me to take you through the five elements, earth, water, air, fire, ether. When you're ready, blink your eyes open, inhale, circle your arms all the way up, reach up and exhale slowly, gently forward fold. Initially, just get your palms behind your calves and slowly realize where you can move with your flexibility, making sure your hips remain over your heels. Feel that stretch in your hamstrings, then see if you can reach your heart further forward before you start engaging your biceps to pull your heart in towards your knees, maybe sliding your palms down towards your ankles, maybe next to your feet, wherever your, flex your initial flexibility will take you. 
as we do more rounds, you'll be able to go deeper. So be patient with yourself. Just as the earth was patient through all that process of lightning, thunder, meteorites hitting it, and then slowly evolved into land. When you're ready, inhale, come up halfway, chin up, fingertips pointing down, exhale, bend your knees, take your right foot all the way back. Stay in your low lunge, keep your hips low, keep your right knee straight, reach your heart forward, get your right palm next to your left foot, inhale, circle your left palm up, gentle twist. Push down into your right palm. Try and line up your shoulders. Reach up with your left fingertips. Stay with your breath. Slowly release your left palm down. Rotate your right heel down. Left heel in line with your right arch. Feet are perpendicular to each other. Push down into the outer edge of your right foot. Extend your right arm, circle up, warrior two. This is probably the most grounded, the most earthy pose, warrior two. There's just no flying out of this one. I'm, I'm going to reduce the complexity in the vinyasa today because I just want you to feel that sense of groundedness. So here, can you increase that sense of groundedness by pushing the outer edge of your right foot into the mat? Can you bring your left hip closer to your left ankle? So forward and down a little more. Can you increase the length of your spine? So pushing out from your feet up towards the sky, pushing into the earth to reach for the sky. Relax your shoulders when you're ready. Windmill your palms all the way around. Get your left foot all the way back to plank. So hips in line with shoulders, shoulders in line with your wrists, pulling your navel in, drop your knees down ever so gently. Take your hips slightly back, bend your elbows, get your heart down between your palms and your chin on the mat. Knees, chest, chin. Unlike the Chaturanga Dandasana, this is earthy because you're making contact with the earth at at least eight points. So stay with Ashtanga, which is eight points on the mat and then slowly release everything down to the mat, hip points, knees, toes, relax your toes on the mat. Keep pushing all 10 toes in the mat, spread your fingers under your shoulders, push the mat forward with your fingers, inhale, gently come up to baby cobra. Keep sticking your hip points down on the mat. Keep taking your heart forward. Keep your shoulders away from your ears. Gentle squeezing in of your shoulder blades. And then lower yourself down. Tuck your toes in. Come up through your knees, hips up and back. Down dog. Spread your fingers, index fingers parallel to one another. See if you can push that mat forward now with your palms. In order to do that, you've got to literally press your palms into the mat. Feel the solidity of the earth. Then try and bring your heels down towards the mat, making sure your heels are lining up behind your second and third toes. Once again, feel the solidity of the earth. That solidity gets translated into a stretch in your hammies. Look forward between your fingertips, Get your right foot all the way forward between your palms on the center line. Keep your hips low, keep your left knee straight, get your left palm next to your right foot. Inhale, circle your right arm up, reach up as high as you can. Slowly circle your right palm down. 
rotate your left heel down, right heel in line with your left arch, push your left outer edge of your foot into the mat, extend your left arm, swing up, warrior two. Once again, feel the solidity of the earth through your feet. So when you're a baby, you actually are not on your feet. You're on your back. You feel the solidity of the earth on your back. And then you turn over, then you get onto your knees and palms, and then you stand up. But once you're up, you feel the earth only through your feet. Keep pushing your right hip down towards your right ankle. Increase the length of your spine. Relax your shoulders. When you're ready, windmill your arms all the way on either side of your front foot. Get your back foot all the way forward into a deep forward fold. Pull yourselves in. If your fingertips don't reach the mat, it's fine. Hold on to the backs of your calves. Get a nice forward fold. Inhale, come up halfway. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, circle your arms all the way up. If you need to bend your knees, reach up, keep reaching up. And exhale, palms in front of your heart. Relax. Stay in touch with your breath. Go back to your posture. Are your feet still hip distance apart? Are you pushing down into all four corners of your feet? Are you pulling up your kneecaps? Is your tailbone pointing down? Is your spine growing tall? Are your shoulders relaxed? Now we move to the water element, characterized by its fluidity. So when we were doing the earth, we were solid, we were rock solid. When we moved, we moved with intention. With water, it's going to be more of a gentle flow. Water can be torrid, it can be fast, it can be furious, or it can be a gentle flow. The gentle flow we've already explored with the earth. So I would much rather we explore the fluidity of water. So we'll pick up the face a bit. When you're ready, blink your eyes open, inhale, reach your arms all the way up and back. Get into a slight back bend if you can. Reach your fingertips up and back. Inhale, come back to vertical. Exhale, circle your palms all the way down into your deepest forward fold, wherever your flexibility takes you. Inhale, come up halfway. Exhale, bend your knees, fingertips on either side of your feet. Get your left foot all the way back. Stay in high lunge. Inhale, circle your arms all the way up to high lunge. Reach up. When you're ready, just drop your left heel down, heel to heel alignment into warrior one. So your left hip is still facing forwards. You're still not moving your left hip to the side. When you're ready, gently just nudge your left foot so that you get into heel to arch alignment, feet are perpendicular, open out into warrior two. Now your hips open out to the side of the mat. Release your right palm down, take, uh, no, sorry, release your left palm down, take your right palm up and back. Reverse warrior. Inhale, come back, warrior two. Exhale, intense side stretch. So whatever works for you, right forearm on your thigh, left arm going up and across like Ranjini is doing. If you want, release your right palm down to your knee but keep pushing your left shoulder back. Inhale, come back very fluid to warrior two. 
windmill your arms around on either side of your front foot. So it's feeling like it's becoming a stacked flow. Get your right foot all the way back to plank. Hips in line with shoulders. When you're ready, exhale, push back, down dog. Inhale, come back to plank. Exhale, knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga, yogi's choice. All the way down to the mat, relax all 10 toes on the mat. Inhale, come up to full cobra, stick your hip points to the mat. Keep your elbows bent, but keep taking your heart up and forward to the extent of the, your ability to compress your lower back. Reach your toes further back. Slowly release all the way back down. Tuck your toes in, either bent knees or straight knees. Push up to plank. And then hips up and back to down dog. Look forward, get your left foot all the way forward between your palms. Stay on the balls of your right foot. Inhale, circle your arms all the way up. Exhale, release your right heel down, heel to heel alignment, warrior one. Keep pushing your right hip forward. And now just arc your right foot slightly further to the back so that you get into left heel in line with right arch. Feet up perpendicular, open out, warrior two on the other side. Keep pushing your left hip down towards your left ankle. Remember, even for water to flow, it still needs the earth. Without the earth, the water can't flow. But equally, water is connected to air because it's water vapor that moves up. Drop your right palm, take your left palm up and back. Reverse your warrior. Inhale, come back, warrior two. Exhale, intense side stretch. So get your left forearm on your thigh. Circle your right arm across, right arm next to right here. Keep pushing your right shoulder back towards the wall behind. Very good. If you can reach your left palm down to your left ankle, keep reaching forward with your right fingertips. Push your right pinky toe into the mat. Inhale, float back up, warrior two. Windmill your arms around, get your back foot all the way forward, deep forward fold. Inhale, come up halfway. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, circle your arms all the way up. Palms together in front of your heart. Stay with your breath. Check your heart rate. We'll stay with water, but we'll start making it feel a little more airy. Inhale, circle your palms up and back. Reach up, reach back into a little bit of a back bend. Inhale, come back up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, come up halfway. Exhale, bend your knees, fingertips on either side of your front foot. Get your right foot all the way back. Stay on the balls of your right foot. Inhale, come up, high lunge. From here, parallel your arms to the floor. Reach for your box of chocolates into warrior three. 
So reach forward with your fingertips. Yes, pick your right leg up. Keep pointing your toes down, not to the side or back towards the wall behind. Stay stable with your warrior three. Four, three, two, one. When you're ready, circle back to high lunge. Drop your right heel down, heel to arch alignment, warrior two. Straighten your left knee. Reach through your left fingertips for the box of chocolates into triangle. So keep reaching and then circle your left palm down, right palm up. Keep pushing your right shoulder back to your nicest triangle. Look down at your left big toe. Bend your left knee. Get your right palm on your right hip. Get your left fingertips eight inches ahead of your left big toe, a little to the left. Drag your right foot in halfway. Square out your right shoulder on top of your left shoulder. Keep looking down at your left big toe. Float your right leg up, half moon. If you can, your right arm up, straighten your left knee, strongly flex your right ankle. You're now flying with the air, but you're still flowing like the water. When you're ready, bend your left knee, reach further back with your right heel, warrior two. Wiggle your palms around. Get your left foot all the way back and up, three-legged down dog. Reach up with your left foot as far back as it will go. Open your left hip above your right hip. Bend your left heel, left knee, so that your left heel is in towards the left hip. Take that left knee up towards the sky. Stay with your breath. Enjoy your air. Sweep your left foot all the way forward, your left foot all the way forward in between your palms. Are we on the same side or have we changed sides? Yes, we're on the same side. So, here's the thing. Either walk your left foot back and get your right foot forward or if you want, hop and switch your feet. Jump and just switch your feet. If your right ankle is not directly below your right knee, walk it forward. When you're ready, inhale, circle your arms all the way up. Reach up, high lunge. Parallel your arms to the floor. Reach forward for your box of chocolates and then go into warrior three. Stay with your breath. Reach back with your left toes or strongly flex your left ankle, but your toes either point back or down, never to the side. Keep your left hip lined or level with your right hip. If you can, keep your standing leg strong at the knee, so straight knee. If you can't, by all means, do bend your right knee just a bit. Slowly release back to high lunge. Drop your left heel down, heel to arch alignment. Open up, warrior two. Straighten your right knee, standing triangle. Reach with your right fingertips for your box of chocolates to move into a classic triangle. Keep reaching. You're still doing air. Or half water, half air. Reach your palm all the way down. Reach your left palm up. Look up at your left fingertips. Stay with your breath. When you're ready, 
Start bending your right knee in, look down at your right big toe. Get your left palm onto your left hip, right fingertips eight inches ahead of your right big toe, a little to the right. Drag your left foot in halfway. Square out your left shoulder over your right shoulder. Keep looking down at your right big toe. Float your left leg up, half moon. Straighten your right knee. And then if you want to, left palm up towards the sky into your best version of your half moon. Stay with your breath. Gently start bending in your right knee. Reach back with your left heel even more as you sweep out into warrior two. Once again, stay with your breath. Windmill your palms all the way on either side of your front foot and sweep your right leg all the way back and up. Reach back, reach up. Take your right hip over your left hip. Bend your right knee so that your right heel reaches your right hip. Take your right knee up towards the sky. Keep pushing your right shoulder back so that you're in line with your left shoulder. Stay with your breath. And then sweep your right foot all the way back in front between your palms. And then take your right foot all the way back to simple down dog. So we were half air, half liquid. We were flowing like the water but we were floating like air. Look forward between your fingertips Come onto your tippy toes, bend your knees. If you can, jump your feet all the way forward. If you can't, feel free to walk your feet one at a time between your feet into your best little forward fold. Now you're really flying. So that's your air element. We've covered the earth. We've covered water. Then we did half air, half water. Now we'll try to see what it means to be fully air. But as you know, water and air are linked. Inhale, come up halfway. Reach your heart forward, chin up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, circle your arms all the way up. Reach up towards the ceiling. Stretch and then palms together in front of your heart, release. Stay with your breath. Check in with your heartbeat. Check in with how you feel. And remember, if it ever gets too much, you get to stop. Just feel free to lie down on the mat in Shavasan because nature knows when to stop. So there are thunderstorms. That's your air and your water element working furiously together. And then all of a sudden it just stops. So be true to your own nature. Know when to stop. Don't push your limits. No need to absorb the destructive elements of nature. But if you're ready, blink your eyes open. Inhale, circle your arms all the way up and back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, up halfway, reach your heart forward, chin up, exhale, fingertips on either side of your feet, bend your knees, jump back to down dog. Take your right leg all the way up, reach up with your right leg. Bend your right knee, right heel in towards the right hip, Open your right knee up towards the sky. And now circle your right foot all the way across in between your left palm and your left foot 
all the way to the left side of your body so that your right foot is right next to your left palm. Keep your right knee straight. Maybe your left heel will automatically reach down to the mat. Circle your left palm up. Keep pushing your hips up. Come on, reach up. So this is collapsed star. Reach across with your left palm. Feel the strength of the pose, even though you're kind of flying. When you're ready, reach your left palm back down to where it was and circle your right leg all the way back and up. Now bend your right knee in again, get your right heel in towards the hip, take your right knee up towards the sky, same thing. Right knee up, right knee up, bend your right knee in and now see if you wanna flip your dog. So get your right foot all the way down into a little bit of a back bend. Can you feel the airiness of the posture? Reach your right palm up and across. Keep lifting your hips even higher. Don't sink into your hips right now. Don't give up. Stay with your breath. Slowly release. Get your right palm all the way down. Your right leg next to your right, your right foot next to your left foot into your nicest, yummiest down dog. Inhale to plank, move with the air. Exhale, knees, chest, chin or chaturanga. If you're doing chaturanga, just push your heels forward. Gently drop down, shoulders in line with your hips. Stop when your torso reaches elbow height. Chin moving forward and then drop down all the way to the mat. Flatten out your toes, relax all 10 toes on the mat. Re release your palms slightly behind so your wrists are in line with your last trip. Inhale, push up to up dog, lift your hip points, lift your heart up, shoulders away from the ears, heart pushing forward. It's like your shoulder blades are pushing in towards each other, like your heart wants to push out, squeeze out of your rib cage. Neck, a natural extension of your spine. No need to jerk your chin up on this one. Do it if it feels good. Don't do it if it doesn't feel good. When you're ready, tuck your toes in, hips up and back, down dog once again. Reach your heels down towards the mat. Float your left leg up towards the sky. Bend your left knee, left heel in towards the left hip. Open your left knee up towards the sky. Keep reaching up, but push your left shoulder back so that your shoulders are aligned, but keep reaching your left knee up. When you're ready, circle your left foot all the way through. No, 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 okay. No, 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 Ranjani, Ranjani. It's the fallen star. So left foot all the way across, thread the needle. Yeah, start from there, thread the needle, left foot next to right palm, right palm lifts up, lift your hips even higher up, reach your right arm across, stay with your breath, release your right palm back down to where you started from, pull your left knee in towards your chest and then left foot back and up, three legged like down dog, once again bend your left knee in, left heel in towards the left hip, Open your left knee up towards the sky and then see if you want to flip your dog. Left foot reaches down, left arm reaches up and across. Good job. Stay with your breath. Four, three, two, one. Slowly release back to down dog. Hips up and back. Inhale, come to plank. Exhale, knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga, yogi's choice. I could have been brutal and asked you to do one leg up, but I didn't. Oh, no, don't do it. We don't have the symmetry on the other side now. All the way down, thank you. Slide your palms back. Rip, uh, wrists in line with your last rib. Inhale, come up to up dog. Lift your hip points, lift your heart. Now, if you can, turn your chin over your right shoulder to look at your left heel. 
come back to neutral. Turn your chin over your left shoulder to look at your right heel. Come back to neutral. Hips up and back, down dog. Either go through your knees or knees straight, yogi's choice. Look forward between your fingertips. Come up to your tippy toes. Bend your knees in. Take an inhale. Reach your tailbone up and back. On the exhale, either jump or walk your feet forward between your palms. Intense forward fold. Inhale, come up halfway. Exhale, full forward fold. Slightly bend your knees, inhale, circle your arms all the way up. And exhale, palms in front of your heart. Stay with your breath, get in touch with your heartbeat. See how you feel. You need to take a break. Child's pose or Shavasan, Pop's pose. Always an option, always an option. Stay with your breath. We're going to move to fire. Fire is your digestive juices, which is water and air that you breathe, combining to digest your food, creating the fire, creating the energy for you to accomplish everything in your life. Just like the earth, water, air combine with the sun to create fire. When you're ready, make sure your feet are hip width apart because you know when you do fire, you're going to do a chair pose. So yogis, whether you like it or not, keep your feet hip width apart. Push down equally into all four corners of your feet. Pull up your kneecaps, tailbone pointing down. Inhale, circle your arms all the way up towards the ceiling. Reach up, come on. Now, keeping this vertical line, start moving your hips back and down. Bend your knees, but make sure your knees do not reach beyond your toes. Keep reaching up with your fingertips. Your arms remain next to your ears. Keep pulling in with your uh, elbows. Imagine a block of wood between your palms. Push into that block of wood. Keep taking your tailbone back and down. Lift your chin. Don't look down between your feet. When you're ready, exhale. Circle your palms all the way down. Next to your feet, forward fold. Hips up. Straighten your knees. Inhale, come up halfway. Exhale, bend your knees. Fingertips on either side of your feet. Jump back or walk back to down dog. When you're ready, look forward between your palms. Come up onto your tippy toes. Bend your knees. Either jump or walk your feet back between your palms. Yes, it's crazy. I know we haven't done this jumping back and forth for a long time. Once again, straighten your knees, hips over your heels. Pull in your maximum forward fold. By now you're warm. I'm sure you can deepen your forward fold to the max. Inhale, come up halfway. Exhale, forward fold, bend your knees. Make sure your feet are hip width apart. Bend your knees, reach your tailbone as far back as you can. Reach your heart as far forward as you can. Circle your arms next to your ears. No, 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 no. Don't go into uh, uh, chair pose yet. Just stay down, stay low. Stick your heart to your thighs. Reach your fingertips forward next to your ears. Reach your tailbone back. Keep your knees behind your toes. Inhale, release into chair pose. Reach your fingertips up. Feel your heart away from your thighs. Get your palms together. Get your right elbow outside your left knee. Twisted chair pose. Keep taking your left elbow up towards the sky. 
Transfer all your weight to your left foot. Get your right foot all the way back. Twisted low lunge. Stay with your breath. I know, brutal. Can you feel the squeezing in your abs? That's your belly fire kicking in. Absolutely great pose, great asana for your digestion. Squeezing those digestive juices into the organs. And that's why I always say don't eat anything at least three hours before your practice so that now you're ready. Whatever has been accumulating, when you're ready, release your palms on either side of your front foot. Take your left foot all the way back hips up and back, down dog. If you want, relax in child's pose. If you don't want and you want to remain active, release your right palm and hold on to the outer edge of your left ankle. Now try and get your right shoulder under your left shoulder and try and look up at the ceiling from under your left armpit. Try and keep your hips level. Release. Into down dog. Do the same thing on the other side. Release your left palm outside your right knee to the extent a right ankle or your right, uh, right calf, whatever works. Use that leverage to push your left shoulder under your right shoulder. Look from underneath your right armpit up towards the ceiling to the extent of your flexibility. Stay with your breath. Breathe. Come back to down dog. Come up onto your tippy toes, bend your knees, inhale, take your tailbone up and back. Exhale, jump or walk your feet all the way forward into forward fold. Bend your knees, take your tailbone as far back as you can. Make sure your feet are hip width apart. Stick your heart to your thighs. Inhale, circle your arms next to your ears. Reach all the way forward with your fingertips. Reach back with your tailbone. At your next inhale, feel your heart up into a chair pose. Reach your fingertips up, tailbone back and down one inch more. You, all your weight is in your heels. Your toes can literally flap off the mat for all you care. Get your palms together. Get your left elbow outside your right knee. Twist. Stay with your breath. See how you feel. See how your breath changes. Because you're firing up the fire in your belly, your breathing becomes much more difficult. The elements play with each other. When you're rock solid like the earth, you'll find it difficult to flow. When you're flowing like water, you'll find it difficult to fly into the air. When you're flying in the air, you will not be able to engage your core and yet you need your core for everything. When you're ready, push down into your right foot, all your weight into your right foot. Take your left foot all the way back, twisted low lunge. Reach your heart forward with the inhale. Exhale, twist a little more. Inhale, lift your left ribs away from the floor. Exhale, take your right ribs back towards the wall behind. When you're ready, release your palms all the way forward on either side of your front foot. Take your right foot all the way back to down dog. Once again, if you want to get into child's pose, if you want to do something crazy, take your right leg up. Bend your right knee. Imagine you're reaching your head with your right toes. So keep taking your knee up. 
you're not, if you want open your right hip over your left hip, doesn't matter. Now, if you can get onto your left fingertips, walk your left palm out to the side, stay with the balance, stay with the down dog. So keep pushing your finger, uh, your shoulders back. If you can release your left palm, hold on to your right foot with your left palm. Keep taking your tailbone up and back. Keep your shoulders moving back. Keep your right knee moving up and back. I know it's a crazy, crazy, crazy twisted uh, balance, but hey, this is fire. Slowly release. Take your left leg up, left leg up, bend your left knee. Imagine you're trying to take your left toes to touch the back of your head. Start walking your right palm out to the side. Start getting onto your right fingertips. Feel your balance and then release your right palm. Hold on to your left ankle. Keep taking your left knee up. Keep pushing your shoulders back. Feel that fire burning in the core because you just can't do this without your core. When you're ready, slowly release. Drop down to child's pose, everyone. My word, you worked hard. You worked really hard. Stay with your breath. If you feel like it, spread your knees wide apart so your spine has space to lengthen out between your knees. If you want to bring your knees close together so your spine is rounding over your thighs, whatever feels good with your practice today. We are still on fire. We've still not stopped that fire. We're just taking a little bit of a break. So sometimes you'll feel that your fire is dying down and then there'll be a gust of air, that's your air element, and a few stray sparks will find a little more wood, which is your earth element, to light another fire. Notice how these elements all need each other to grow. At the same time, water can come and totally kill the fire. When you're ready, slowly come up to seated. Take your time and then sit back on your hips. Get your feet on the mat, bend your knees so your knees are at right angles. Keep your feet together, yeah, it doesn't matter. No. Try and straighten your spine. So I'll, I'll give it away if you're getting into Navasan. Make sure that your tailbone, the tip of your tailbone is on the mat. Now get your fingertips slightly behind your hips. Increase the length of your spine, lean back. But make sure that your tailbone is not rounding. You're on the tip of your tailbone. Then, Lift your right foot off the mat so your right calf is parallel to the floor. Then lift your left foot off the mat so your left calf is parallel to the floor. Then release your right fingertips in front of you. Release your left fingertips in front of you. Reach with your fingertips. Reach through with your toes or your heels. Keep thinking of taking your heart up towards the ceiling, maybe your chin up. If you can, straighten your right knee. If you can, straighten your left knee. But keep pulling your knees in towards the elbows. Reach forward with your elbows so you reach through to your knees. Stay with your breath. Five, four, three, two, one. Slowly release. Stay with your fire. Now we'll slowly move into ether. So completely lie down, completely lie down. It's not yet Shavasana. So don't get too happy.
we kind of dousing the fire a little bit. Bend your knees. Cross your right knee over your left knee. Now, last time we dropped both the knees over to the left. This time, drop both your knees over to the right. Get your arms on either side of you. Your palms facing down. Inhale, draw your spine tall. Exhale, release your knees down to the right as much as you can. Stay with your breath. Go back to the elements. Earth, we were solid. We hardly moved. The poses were grounded. We felt the earth beneath us. Water, we move freely, slowly at first, and then like a torrent, like a river. Then we transitioned into air. So we started kind of jumping back and forth. We moved into balance. Then we did a full on airflow. We feel like you're flying. Your feet were literally flying through your body into the uh, collapsed star or the flipped dog. And then we moved into fire, activating the core the thing that keeps your energy going. And now we're transitioning into that quiet stillness of space where there's nothing really except just pure energy vibrations of light, vibrations of space and time. Slowly release, come back to center, uncross your knees, Cross your left knee over the right and drop both your knees over to the left. We explored how the five elements need each other. So I know it's traditional to think of starting with the earth and that's where I started from and said, you born of the earth and you know life as it is because of the earth. Had the earth not existed, your water, fire and air would not have existed either. But make no mistake, the earth arose from the emptiness of space and that was your ether. And that was pure energy. So you don't know where the cycle starts. You don't know where it ends. You really don't know where your life has started or where it's ending. You don't know where this moment starts and where it ends, but you're conscious of a past. You're conscious of a future, but you can never hold on to the present, to the now, because that's fleeting. just like the energy transitions in ether. When you're ready, slowly release, lie down in your most comfortable Shavasana, your corpse pose. And because you're almost a dead body, let it loose. Try not to engage any muscles. Let your palms naturally face up. Let everything relax, every joint in your body, starting from your toes, ankles, knees, hips, spine, shoulders, elbows, wrists, fingers, neck, head, even the hidden joints, the hidden muscles like your tongue, your eyeballs, let it all relax. And as you relax, you'll find it easier to breathe. And your breath is the only thing that keeps you away from actually being a dead body. So focus on that breath. And your breath is the only thing that is now. You can't breathe in the past. You can't breathe in the future. 
So if you stay with the breath, there is a chance you will experience now. And I say this with all seriousness, you will experience that now in all its infinity. Stay there. And through that now, see if you can find your ether. You complete void. You complete pure energy, no thoughts. Because thoughts are energy trying to manifest into matter. So stay away. If a thought comes, don't fight it. Just watch it. Let it dissolve back into energy. When you're ready, take a nice long deep breath in, hold it in for a bit and gently start moving your fingers and toes. When you're ready to exhale, bend your knees in towards your chest. Give yourself a nice little hug, a nice little squeeze and gently rock from side to side. And then roll over to your right, turn your face down, blink your eyes open, come up to seated wherever is comfortable, preferably cross-legged so that you start, end from where you started. Bring your palms in front of your heart, close your eyes, stay with your breath. Find out which element you like the best, which one you like the least and then recognize that you're just judging. And then one last stretch to pull out of your judging, interlace your fingers, inhale, take your arms all the way up, reach. And release. Namaste yogis is always lovely practicing with you. A huge, huge word of thanks to Ranjini who's been such a sport in demonstrating for us. Ranjini joins us all the way from Bahrain and I know there are people from all over the world joining us, but Ranjani, very special. Keep up the practice. If there are any questions, let me know. I'm going to unmute you. So you can unmute yourselves and ask away. You're unmuted. I have a question as usual. Yeah, I'll just stop.